KDE just had a really big release. Plasma 6 is finally out, and I'm kind of curious. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a virtual machine of KDE Neon and just give a quick overview of what Plasma 6 is all about, because honestly, I really liked Plasma 5, even though, you know, I don't run it as a daily driver, even though know, I tend to like tiling window managers, but Plasma 5 was really nice. It was light on resources. It was quite attractive, and I'm hoping Plasma 6 still delivers that same sweet goodness that Plasma 5 offered, but maybe, you know, a few minor improvements. So one of the first things I noticed when I logged in, by default, it defaults to Plasma on Wayland. That's the default desktop session when you go to log in. Now X11 is still there, so you can log into Plasma using X11 if you need to, but with Plasma 6, they're really defaulting to Wayland now. So let's talk about first impression. And for me, there are two things aesthetically that jump out immediately with Plasma 6, and I am quite taken with the wallpaper, and the panel that is now a floating panel, right? So those are new things, right? The wallpapers are always great with every release of KDE Plasma, but this wallpaper here, I've got to say, is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I may have to rip off this wallpaper, even though I'm not going to use Plasma as my desktop environment. I may use that wallpaper. And the floating panel here at the bottom is really nice, too. Now, it's nice aesthetically. One of the things I don't like with floating panels is, you know, you've got some wasted space because you've got this extra padding around a, a floating panel but sometimes uh, desktop environments and window managers when they have a floating panel they will have it uh, auto hide maybe when you you know maximize a window so I open the dolphin file manager if I make it full screen uh, it doesn't auto hide it but you see what it did that is a very neat effect Ah, when you bump up against the panel, it actually becomes a full screen, 100% width panel, like a normal panel. So that solves the wasted space problem. So it's only wasted space. It's not really wasted space when nothing's going on. But as soon as you get some windows that would take up that space, the panel, you know, very smartly becomes that 100% wide panel. I love that effect. I don't think I've ever seen that before with any other desktop environment or window manager, but it makes a lot of sense. One thing I noticed is out of the box, there is only one workspace available for us here. So let me click on the settings manager here, the system settings, and I believe they call their workspaces virtual desktops. So if I do a search for virtual, there it is, virtual desktops. Yeah, they only have one desktop. And for me, I like having more than one workspace. So I'm gonna add, heck, I'm gonna add three for a total of four. And let's do rows, let's do two rows. And let's go ahead and hit apply. That way I have this grid of four workspaces. And I believe the uh, default key bindings for KDE as far as switching workspaces is control and then uh, F1, F2, F3. So let's try control F2. Yeah, that takes me to workspace two. Control F3 would take me to workspace three. Control and F1 would take me back to workspace one. Those key bindings, not crazy about those key bindings. They're a little convoluted, but of course you can always change any of the default key bindings to whatever fits your needs. Now that I've got a couple of windows open, let's check out the Alt Tab feature, which is the tab switcher. So if I do Alt Tab and hold Alt and then Tab, you know, I can cycle through the open windows, but that's not a whole Whole lot of windows open. Let's add a few more windows. So let's go ahead and go into development. Let's go ahead and launch the Kate text editor. Let's go into multimedia. Let's launch VLC. Let's launch a few things. How about the system monitor? And now let's try Alt Tab. Oh, and now we get this grid view instead of everything being one line. Once you have enough windows open, it breaks them into rows, which is a nice feature and as you can see as i hold alt and then tab i can cycle through all of the open windows let me go ahead and close out all of these extra windows that i really didn't want to play with i'll leave dolphin open and one interesting key binding for those of you that are not familiar with plasma is you know they have this really neat uh zoom key binding now inside dolphin you can do control plus control minus to zoom in and out on the icons but on the desktop if i switch over here to the desktop itself and i do a super plus 
you know, I can zoom in on the desktop. Super minus would zoom me back out. So that is a really neat feature. The, the fact that you can zoom in and out the entire desktop, if you will, because, you know, that kind of uh, eliminates some of the needs for things like magnifying glasses, you know, those magnifying tools sometimes that you want to zoom in on a specific area of your desktop. So that is a really nice touch. Now, one of the biggest changes with Plasma 6, you know, one of the things that you will immediately notice is different is now. Now, let me click on the desktop directory here. No, oh, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? It's because now I have to double click to get into the desktop directory, right? So double click is now the default instead of single click. So before everything was a single click out of the box on KDE Plasma. And honestly, almost every Linux distribution changed that because anybody coming from any other operating system, whether it be Windows or Mac or any of the BSD operating systems, any other GNU slash Linux distribution that doesn't use KDE Plasma, everything defaults to double clicking to open a file or to get into a folder, right? So single click out of the box was one of those things that people complained about for decades. I mean, this really should have been the default 20 years ago. And people had constantly been saying, hey, you need to make double click the default because as far as for new users to make things as user friendly as possible, it needs to be double click out of the box. And finally, they've made the switch and I'm glad. Now, for those of you that love single click, you can of course revert back to single click there's settings that you know you can get into to make single click the default again but i think most people were going to use double click anyway so i welcome that change one of the things i, I really have to say is i love the uh, the breeze theme now the breeze plasma theme has always been good but this modern iteration of it and this latest iteration of it looks really good kate here looks really nice go ahead and make kate full screen Kate, of course, is your plain text editor, or you can really think of it as an IDE these days because it has so many features built in. For example, there's a, a Git logo here, so I guess it has Git integration now. That's very cool. But you can see the Plasma theme is very nice. You can see it's very modern. There's a lot less noise with it as well. Before, in some of the previous versions of this Breeze theme, um, it had a lot more blue. There were a lot more inset blue lines, blue dividers and things. And now it's a little less busy, right? And it's just this grayish, bluish, grayish color. And for the most part, it's very clean, very plain, very minimal. I like that. They've also played around with a little bit of the spacing. Things are spaced out a little more. Uh, used to be that some of these elements were a little too close to the edge of the windows for for my liking now you know this is much more sleek i would say much more modern looking now although i do like the standard default breeze theme i do prefer dark themes so let's see if i can switch this to breeze dark let's go ahead and see what the dark theme looks like let's go ahead and select that and hit apply and oh we get a new wallpaper, same wallpaper, except darker colors. I like that. So that is very nice. So it dynamically changes the wallpaper to a more dark wallpaper when you change from breeze to breeze dark. Yeah, just from aesthetics, just from everything, just looking good. And also just performance. I mean, all the... Uh, Everything is peppy. And I'm, I'm in a virtual machine. I didn't give this virtual machine, you know, crazy amounts of resources. I'm only using two threads of my CPU. I'm only using six gigs of RAM. And this is very clean. The animations, you know, happen instantly. You can see, especially this bar, when it when I make something full screen, the bar immediately slides. It's got a, a slight delay, which is, is supposed to have a slight delay for the animation effect. And I'm very impressed with how they did that panel. Now let's check out system resource usage. Now KDE Neon, as far as the distribution that I'm, I'm using right now, it doesn't ship a whole lot of things out of the box. It's very much just a plain uh, Ubuntu 2204 LTS distribution with KDE Plasma on top of it, but they don't really ship with a lot of programs and extra, you know, services and things running in the background. So this will be a, a good test of as far as RAM usage, CPU usage. So if I do Control Alt T to bring up the terminal, because on Ubuntu and most Ubuntu based distributions, they have that key binding. Control Alt T brings up the terminal, which is console. Let me make console full screen and I'll zoom in and let's run HTOP. HTOP is not found, but being that it is an Ubuntu based distribution, we could do a sudo apt install HTOP, give it my super secure password, and now that HTOP is installed, 
let's go ahead and check out system resource usage. Now, actually, memory is a little high. It says it's using one gigs of the six gigs of memory using a bit of CPU. I wonder if I log out and log back in. Uh, let's do this on a cold boot and see if things change a little bit. So I logged out and logged back in just to make sure there were no background process running that would suck up a lot of RAM usage. For one thing, Discover was checking for automatic updates, so I killed the uh, Discover Software Center from checking for those updates because that will drastically change the readings from HTOP, especially for RAM usage. So let me uh, zoom in here. And now let's run HTOP. And you can see now we're only using 793 megs of the 6 gigs of RAM, so about 800 megs which is pretty normal. I want to say Plasma 5, I was typically getting readings around the 600 to 700 megabyte range. So yeah, it's very similar, uh, maybe a tad high, but you know, I've got a lot going on. And this is, of course, a virtual machine. This is not physical hardware. Let's go ahead and kill HTOP. Now, of course, with the big release of Plasma 6, a lot of the KDE suite of applications also saw some uh, work done, some improvements, some bug fixes. I can't show you much of that because this is such a minimal distribution. There's really nothing installed here. It's just the bare bones uh, KDE desktop with just a couple of applications. But things like, for example, Caden Live, I know got some work done on it. One last thing I want to check. I always have to check the wallpaper. So let's go ahead and right click on the desktop. Let's configure desktop and wallpaper and check out any new wallpapers that are available here. So let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. So a lot of these are the standard plasma wallpapers that I've seen in past releases, but I was looking for the new ones. Here it is, Scarlet Tree. So you have a light version and a dark version, depending on whether you're using Breeze Light or Breeze Dark. You also have this mountain version. Uh, I don't know if that was from a previous version of Plasma, but there is the dark version of the mountain wallpaper, so that is kind of cool. This one here, Patek, I don't know that one. Have I seen this wallpaper before? I'm not sure if I've seen that one before or not, but I, I quite like that wallpaper. That might be the one I go with. Let's go ahead and apply. Now, one thing, I do like the dark wallpaper, but I think this wallpaper is, is dark it would actually contrast better against a light theme. Typically, when you're using a dark theme, you want a light wallpaper. And when you're using a light theme, you want a dark wallpaper. This is dark on dark. So I'm not crazy about that. I'd probably switch to a light theme if I really wanted to use the wallpaper. But overall, yeah, that's a sexy desktop. Just so you know, this few minutes that I've spent, you know, this is my very first time checking out Plasma 6 here on camera. And I gotta say, I am pretty impressed as far as the looks aesthetic wise, I think it is one of the most gorgeous desktops, obviously, that we have available on Linux. And that's saying something because I think the modern versions of GNOME look very good. I think the deepened desktop environment is absolutely fantastic. It's stunningly beautiful. I mean, we've got a lot of really good desktop environments on Linux, but Plasma 6 is, uh, if we were doing a beauty contest, it might take first prize. For those of you that want to check out Plasma 6, if you're on a rolling release distribution, chances are Plasma 6 is already available for you to go ahead and install and, and check out. For those of you that are on a stable release distribution, Ubuntu LTS, for example, so many of you guys are running Ubuntu or Kubuntu, maybe you're running the last LTS, there are backport PPAs available that you can add to get the latest Plasma 6 on Ubuntu. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Mythos, Nate, Arian, Paul, Peace, Hearts from Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tienrin, Tools, Devler, Ward, Gentu, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick first impression of Plasma 6 would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys. If you like my work, you want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.